Hello everyone, welcome back to another resume roundup with myself and Tina Huang. Definitely check out her channel after you finish this video for more of these and other great data science content. I've also linked the playlist for the other resume reviews that we've done in the past below in the description and in the pinned comment. In this episode, we're gonna go through a couple really superb resumes that you should model yours after. You also get a peek at Tina's resume, so I don't think you wanna miss out on that. I might just absolutely roast her resume in a future video. Now on to the show. All right, welcome to another team resume review session. Today we're starting with Mahendra's resume. So again, this is clearly very stylistically pleasing. Our first check as always is to make sure it is one page and it does pass that test. So again, another thing that I don't know if it's controversial, but it differs by the place you live. The image on the on the uh, on the resume. If you're in the U.S., that is an absolute no-no. I would ask people in roles that you're interested in applying to, uh, in countries that you're interested in applying to, what the norm is of that country. So uh, specifically, I know Germany; they almost always require a picture, but in the U.S., we've determined that having a picture can introduce quite a few biases and uh, might be discriminatory for, for some candidates. So uh, I personally believe it's a little better practice that that countries or companies choose not to accept resumes with pictures on them. So um, the education here, uh, I mean, it, it looks pretty good. In, in the US, um, I don't think it really ever makes sense to include your high school unless you had some very interesting high school experience. Uh, again, I'm not sure what the standard is in other countries, but most people usually just include their college experience. Um, if they if they were a part of organizations in school, I think it makes sense to include that there. And I would also personally include certificates under the general education section. If you're worried about that section being too small, one of the easiest way, or like not significant enough, one of the easiest ways to make that look more bust is through adding the certificates there. Um, the personal projects look okay. I would put those above, uh, you know, any of the certificates, uh, but again, below this work experience that looks pretty good. Um, I, I like the achievements. I, I would probably put these in bullet form and try to make sure that each one of these is in a single line. Um, but that, that's, you know, these are pretty sizable achievements and I, and I would include them. I also like the, in, the interests and the languages. I think languages are very, very important, especially if you're applying outside of your country uh, of origin. Um, skills, I would get a little bit more specific with, you know, you can just say SQL rather than practical knowledge. I wouldn't include problem solving and teamwork. I would focus really heavily on what technical skills you bring to the picture. Uh, is it Python, Pandas, whatever that might be. Uh, what do you think, Tina? Yeah, yeah. Pretty much touched on all the points I wanted to touch on as well. Um, I feel like with the education, also it says that you were born in 2000, which means that you're probably a sophomore or higher right now. So I don't, unless it's like a really fancy school that is unknown to me, probably don't need to put in your education for your high school. Uh, I did notice one thing though, you uh, might want to work on your sentence structure and, and just like being more clear, like for under work experiences, technology internship experience, uh, accomplished to build a model using face recognition for singing in by referring to various research papers. So I'm not exactly sure what that means. Um, so you might want to work on like, you know, conveying what, what that is. And also one bullet point seems pretty, you know, sparse, uh, especially since it is an internship experience. So, you know, probably want to follow the format of getting in a description of what's happening also with the impact, um, either as part of the description or somewhere a little bit later as another bullet point and also talk about the technical skills that you use in your internship, especially since it is a technology internship. So I assume that you use technical tools to do it. Um, organizations, yeah, as Ken was saying, put that as part of education. Um, Toastmasters, these are, these are great. It shows that your ability to communicate is very strong, especially if you're a Toastmasters. Uh, certificates up as well with education. Um, for personal projects, so I, 
this is something that's like not not a really big deal but i've said this before seeing as you are relatively young and still in school i would try to just make that you know spruce that up a little bit call it like data science projects or something like that and then for each of the projects that you did have a brief description about them um is right now you have a description for one of them but not not the other ones and you know that's um a little incongruent there as well um yeah achievements like that looks really cool like if you got second place out of 1500 participants like that is an accomplishment um, and i'm really it's really good that you're putting that in there um yeah like i would uh, as ken was saying like probably make that into bullet points as well and for each of them um if you have the the space you can just kind of describe it a little bit more um com we're not even more space making maybe just making a little bit more compact like when i read this second prize and poster presentation conducted during a human college technical fest fest i assume festival like it, it's a lot more professional you kind of condense that into and uh, into like a way that's um immediately understandable to the person reading it yeah i think interests are good as well i also really like the different languages that you listed out um skills yeah, like Ken pretty much touched on everything as well. That's what I got. Yeah, I mean, my biggest thing is that you have, um, you know, you won a coding hackathon, but your uh, the only programming language that is on the resume is listed at the very end. Uh, I think, you know, your programming languages should be up top, especially, you know, we're talking about a data science data analyst role. People are expecting to see Python or R in there. Awesome. I will hand this back up to you. Jonathan Fernandez. All right. Passes the one page test off to a good start. <laughs> All right. Education, University of California, Davis, BS in statistics, machine learning consultation. Good, good over there. Campus involvement, I love that. You know, vice president, founder, research analyst, you did all these, these things, right? I really like how um, it shows that you were involved in the community. So it says you're a research analyst. I'm just seeing if that's also part of your work experience, which I think it is. So yeah, that's fine. Um, yeah, like because these are the things that really emphasize the fact that you are uh, doing things in statistics, which is your major, as well as like in data science in general. Um, Relevant courses, I think that's really good as well, shows that you also have the academic training for data science. Skills, looks good to me. Technical data analysis, data visualization. Um, so one thing is that you, the, the under data analysis, you have NumPy, Panda, Scikit-Learn, and you also have deep learning, I can never pronounce that, tidy R. Tiddler? <laughs> Tiddler? I don't know. <laughs> but these that's part of R, right? And that the stuff in the beginning, that's part of Python. So I think it's better if you're of Python and then parentheses, all these different um, libraries, and then the same for R. It's it's like it makes a bit more sense in that way. Um, yeah. So work experience looks good. So I like how you have quite a lot of work experience. I'm pretty impressed by that. Student assistance. Um, okay. Yeah, like this is the same. This looks pretty good, actually. Like, I really like how you, you know, have three bullet points. It's always like the golden number, like, you know, three, three bullet points. It's enough to describe what you're doing and to, but it's not way too much that's overwhelming to the reader. I also really like how you put in, um, you know, exactly what it is that you use, like PCA, LSTM. So that's really good as well. Um, yeah, and I can pretty much say that for the rest of these as well. Like, it's written really, really well in terms of, everything that would be interested in. So overall, I think this is like a very, very solid resume. What do you think, Ken? Yeah, I agree. There, there, isn't, um, there isn't really anything negative I can say about this. You know, one thing that uh, I, I think would help other people looking at this is thinking about how you can quantify things differently. So mm -hmm. for example, with the academic assistance and tutoring center, he helps students improve their grades by one to two letter grades over the course of a 10 week quarter system. You can also, another way to quantify that is how many students did you help? That's a different way to measure uh, impact, right? So we care that they're improving, but you also wanna think about how many people you help improve. Uh, I would not be shy about saying 
you know, how many different clients you work with or how many different people your, your work affected. That is ultra, also a pure measure of success. I agree 100% with what you said about the technical skills. Um, you know, if you do save a little bit of room there, I think it's it makes sense to talk about more of the analysis techniques that you're comfortable with. You have you have done that in the in a lot of the uh, work experience you have, so not necessarily needed, but it could be helpful there. Uh, if you do have, well, you do clearly have a GitHub. Um, again, if you have some space, I think it'd be practical to say some of the stuff that you have in the GitHub if you do have any projects. But you have enough work experience that you could clearly supplement um, the project experience here. That's all I, I really have on that front. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Really solid job. All right, your turn. All right, so now we have uh, Ayush. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. So a very strong GPA there um, in data science. So data science is an emerging major. It's something that is relatively new. And uh, Yush is, it looks like, about halfway through their coursework there. I, I'm, I personally don't know how, uh, how data science degrees are looked at in the job market. But one thing that Ayush did really well here is that he included his relevant coursework. Uh, that's very, very important, especially if you're coming from a degree that hasn't been very clearly defined yet. You know, we, people might not know what a data science degree is in essence, but if you talk about what courses you are taught there, um, that gives it a lot more clarity around that. I like the tactical skills. I think this is a very effective way to put a lot of these things in. Again, I'd mentioned in the previous resume talking about some of the different techniques that you're using, the, the algorithms that you're, that you're comfortable with uh, could also be pretty effective. Uh, the structure of this is really good. Professional experience next. Um, and we were right on that on that one page mark, which makes a lot of sense. Uh, I like how you talk about a lot of these things. So, you know, 100,000 couples data using pandas. Um, you know, maybe again a little bit. Uh, oh, okay, so uh, you know, we're looking at identifying important features that affect contraceptive usage. So you do have the outcome there, um, and then a lot of really a lot of personal projects here. Uh, this to me is a very, very strong resume. Uh, one that people can learn a lot from. I mean, this is very well organized. Um, you know, there's some fun projects too. Like I like this Bye 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 project. That's the type of project that, uh, that I read more about. Um, and the links and, you know, placing in a lot of these things I mean, wow, this is this is really, really solid in my opinion. What do you think, Tina? Yeah, I'm really impressed by this resume. Like, like it, it, it's like, it's so clear that you actually spent a significant amount of time just by the fact that the spacing, you can tell that you're really trying to fit in information that is valuable and, you know, trimming down a lot as well. And that's really, really obvious to me looking at your resume. And the fact that you care so much already just, you know, has a really good good start in my mind. Um, pretty much like echoing what Ken has said, like really solid there. I love how much professional experience that you have. And I really like how you, you emphasize like what it is that you did, right? You like what API is. Yeah, you still did it in a way that someone who isn't um, exactly sure like what, what it is that these technologies are, is are able to understand. Um, you worked at Cisco, Qualcomm, like you did, you know, you did research, you did software you did and change, data. <laughs> Sorry? Pretty impressive companies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and the fact that you did software engineering and you did um, data analysts and complex systems research, it just shows that, you know, you got this, like, you know, they feel like full stack development. This is like the full stack of data science, right? You got the software part of it. You could do data engineering if you had to. Um, and you have these uh, data science skills as well, both from your education and your experience. And for the complex systems research intern, um, the, like cleaning those data using like, that's, that's like a really, really solid data science internship. And with your personal projects, I also think they're, they're really great. Um, I think this is a really good example of what Ken was saying when you have 
um, like a goal where like, you know, a brief description of what that project is talking about. And just looking through these, I, I immediately exactly know what's happening. And that's, that's absolutely amazing. Um, and you use like, you quantified it. You also put everything in terms of what you're doing and bye 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 by Backstreet Boys immediately jumps out. If I were the recruiter, that's probably what I would be mentioning to you. So that's always really good that it's catching someone's eye. Um, and in terms of leadership as well, like I love that you have leadership skills and you're able to communicate um, and just like makes you a really, really well-rounded candidate. And interest always like seeing that as well, just adds a little bit more makes that person a little bit more like three-dimensional, right? Like your languages and your activities. You're into drone flying. That's a cool one. I, I bet you're going to get asked about that as well. And, oh, and skincare enthusiasts. Well, you, and, you and Tina could talk for hours. <laughs> or you, you and Andrew Mal, I mean, uh, Data Leap could talk for hours. Yeah, I feel like it's more like Andrew from Data Leap. His, his skincare is, is um, very exceptional. I need to ask him for, for more advice there. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, one one last thing I'd like to point out on this is that, you know, Ayush is still only halfway through his degree, or maybe a little bit more than halfway, and he's already been able to do three internships. Um, that is something, if you know this is the career path that you want to get on, you want to be as proactive as possible doing this. You want to, You want to get as many opportunities as you can, and it's never too early to start applying for these internships, trying to do research. Um, you know, he could walk out of this with five internships plus in his college career. Um, and if you're doing that, I would almost guarantee that one of those companies is going to be extending an offer to him. So just thinking about it from that perspective, you know, he, he's going to walk out of, out of college with two years of experience already. Um, and that, that is immeasurably valuable uh, in this marketplace. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, your professional experience in the end, it's, that's the first thing a recruiter is going to be looking at. And it really is the most important thing. You guys, uh, should I show a glimpse of my resume? Because it's very, very similar to Yeah, that. for sure. All right. Uh, let's see over here. Dun, dun, dun. Let's roast right? it. <laughs> Yo, roast it, roast it. <laughs> Maybe we can put that as a bonus. You can roast Tina's resume, <laughs> but yeah, like formatting, it's actually really similar to mine. I clearly changed my address and things like that. So no, I'm certain you live at one beep beep boop street with your cats. <laughs> yes. Uh, oh, you know they're my cats. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. No, I mean this looks pretty good. I, I wonder why she got hired at a uh, at a fan company. <laughs> you know what? I will actually do my own resume reviews. I will put that up and hopefully I, that will come out before this comes out and I will link that. If not, check out my channel. Yeah. Well, what, one thing before we go off of your, of your resume, um, you, you have in under your education and honors that you earned a scholarship. People, mm -hmm. that is something that I don't know why, but recruiters, managers go nuts for if you earn a scholarship in some way, that is a huge badge of honor. That is a huge credential. And if you're thinking about it, you won uh, basically a thousand dollars for your academic work. I mean that you're you're getting paid to go to school in some sense, and people view that like uh, almost like you know a job. They're 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 doing some sort of work and they're getting paid for it. Psychologically, it, it's very similar. So uh, same with uh, even an athletic scholarship. Uh, that to a lot of people means a lot. If you have earned a scholarship, 100% put that on your resume somewhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Like, I think athletics is also much more important in, um, in America than it is in other countries. Very true, so I yes. know that's like, right. It's like a huge deal. That's like your your field of interest. So I people with like you know apparently do they make like NBA people go to college these days now or something? Uh, yeah, for the most part, if all major sports except for baseball uh you you have to either wait or go to a year of college at least all right i will share my resume at a later time but here's a glimpse <laughs> all, right. all right you're still sharing you're we're oh, on to me. either anonymized or andrew melendez all right let's do anonymized
All right. Ooh, what font is this? I really, this is like a nice font. <laughs> I, it's like not very, maybe I'm just blind and can't tell, but it looks really different, but very clean from, from what I normally see. So I do like that. Um, is there a, like a shadow on the, on the lines for education? Do you see that? Oh, uh, that, that's eyes? what you're, that's what Ken's into, <laughs> the lines. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm big into lines. I'm just trying to, you know, the aesthetics get me. Yeah, yeah, there is a shadow. Very nice. Very good touch. You know, this is this is what's gonna keep keep your recruiter's interest. <laughs> no, really though, it, it actually I, I feel like that came off as a little bit sarcastic, but I'm serious. It actually is really, really nice and aesthetically pleasing. Yeah, people um, pay attention to the little things, which is they do. They really do, especially if you're looking through like a bunch of these, which we are right now. Just like something nice, it really just stands out to you. Well, that is an interesting point you make there is that our process for going through these, I mean, obviously we're critiquing and giving feedback, but recruiters, uh, hiring managers, they're going through these at an even higher clip. So we're spending a couple of minutes on, on these. Uh, recruiters are probably spending a third of that time, a quarter of that time. Uh, so the things that we pick up um, are the first things that, that anyone really looks at as well. Exactly, exactly, yeah, yeah. You, they spend even less time than we do. Um, so let's see, one page. Off to a good start. Check. All right, we should make a checklist, by the way. Yeah, we actually should. Why don't we just do that? Why don't we like make a video where like this is a checklist of things that you know you should do in your resume? I don't know if you already have a video about that. I think there. I have a checklist in my course, but I'm I'm happy to co-create a, a completely a public one as well. Yeah. Yeah future video idea. I think I think will be really helpful especially since we're doing this like right now. Yeah, I, 100%. All right, education, uh, candidate bachelor of math, statistics, minor in music, very interesting. That's something uh, your recruiter is probably going to pick up on as well. President's entrance scholarship. I have a feeling that you went to the University of Toronto <laughs> because that is a very Canadian thing and I think it's especially common in the University of Toronto. I might be wrong. Whoever you are, if I'm right, we're wrong. Let me know. <laughs> um, cumulative average 82%. Okay, yeah, you went to Canada for sure because that percentage corresponding to 3.56, uh, that's a Canadian percentage, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> All right, relevant coursework, databases, data structures, combinatorics, communication, and statistics. That's awesome. Um, you know, you're telling me what it is that you're actually learning over here. Uh, skills. Okay, so I wouldn't put proven knowledge in Python. Um, you can prove your knowledge in Python by showing that you use Python in your projects and your professional experiences. But except for that though, it's good like list out Python R, all these things, that's what people are looking for. Um, I would also list out some of the libraries that you use for both Python and R, especially those that are most relevant to data science. Proficient with Microsoft Office Suite. Um, so this is okay to have if you just happen to have more room, but if you don't have more room, there's, it's also like not necessary to have over here as well. But I would pump up that skill section with just more things um, just like software stuff that you've used or different like stuff that you use in your projects and your professional experience. Projects. Okay, so first off, experiences go above projects. Um, it's much more important for a recruiter. But let's look at projects first. Uh, forecast, build website that analyzes data on stocks. This looks really good. Um, so I'm looking at this right now and these like, these look really, really interesting projects and I really like how you didn't you know, like say a lot of things about them and you're able to put in what kind of technical skills that you're using. So that's really great. And you also give pretty good context about what's happening. So I would try to quantify things a little bit more. Um, so especially since like you're building a website, offering insights on findings and what kind of insights and what does the insights do? You aim to help people to make better decisions. Um, like how has that actually helped people make better decisions? What's an example of a decision that is better now? Right, um, technology stocks analysis. So similarly for all these other ones as well, for touch, um, this looks interesting. 2D Unity soccer game coded in C Sharp. Pretty cool, pretty interesting. World Cup 2018 machine learning model. That's also really, really interesting. So this is one thing that 
just like I'm suggesting. So I feel free to, you know, just take that into consideration. You have a music minor. How cool it would be if you actually did something that's music related in your projects. It really ties things together. And I think as a recruiter, you will definitely like see that and be like, this is really interesting. You know, it's not something that you see very, very often. Yeah. Um, and for experiences, marketing director, that's pretty good. So I feel like marketing director, that sounds like this is maybe a school project. Um, I'm not sure, but if it is like an actual experience, that's pretty impressive. Um, and also for a data analyst. So yeah, data, okay. So I feel like if you're going for a data science position. You should try to um, emphasize the data analyst role a little bit more. I would maybe even condense some of the other things and make the data analyst part just a little bit more um, evident in your resume. So, cause that's where the recruiter is gonna be looking at to see what kind of experience that you had in the past. I like the quantification. That is a lot, <laughs> that was a 400%, 865%. That's very impressive. So that's, see that's something that's probably gonna catch the eye. So you might actually want to kind of talk a little bit more about that. Cause what, what this also can come off as like a little bit, I don't wanna say sketchy, but like maybe it's like a super early stage startup, which didn't have that much going on. So whatever it is, um, I, I would try to like just talk a little bit more about what happened there. So it seems like a more um, professional experience, which I'm yeah. sure it is. You know, I, I would, yeah. I, I think for that data analyst portion where we're saying increase unique visitors by whatever that might be, um, adding on how you did that. So if you combined the third bullet and the first bullet, um, that tells a little bit more of a story there. And I think that that's, that legitimizes it a little bit more rather than just saying, oh, we did, you know, we did this in one sentence or, or those seem disjointed. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know, to me that, that tell, even if it's a little bit of a longer thing, that tells a bit more of a story and it makes a little bit more sense there. Yeah, agreed. Anything else? Um, yeah, I, I think, so uh, just going down to the projects, these are really strong projects in my mind. And uh, for the touch, the, the, the game created in Unity, I think having a little gameplay demo, a video, a, a link, something like that, like you've done with Forecast, uh, that, that is a really cool value add. The more people can see the work or interact with the work that you've done, the better. I mean, those are, in my mind, some of the best things you can do is have clickable things, have things that uh, are, are for examples, have websites that people can use. As I've mentioned before, that really conveys that you have an understanding of the user or, or the value that people are creating, especially if you're building a game, like a game is built for a user, right? That, that shows something that almost none of the other, uh, anything else you could do would show uh, in this setting. So I think that I would highlight that unique experience, maybe even in, in an about you section. I mean, you do mention unity in your skills, but uh, again, sharing a little bit more information about yourself. Uh, Tina had mentioned the music angle where you're doing a project related to that. Maybe you're, you're interested in, um, you know, like auto composition in games uh, of the soundtracks or, or like ramping up when action happens. That, that to me is such cool stuff that really ties together your knowledge and your subject area expertise. All right, I, we're on to the last resume of the session here. And that is Andrew Melendez. So first off, I will make it bigger. <laughs> uh, and the first thing we see that this does not pass the one page test. So we want to figure out how to get this into a single page. And you know, for a lot of people, Getting something to a single page can just be a matter of resizing things. As you can see uh, on my resume, which I showed in a previous video, and we'll link that, uh, I have a lot of stuff in there, but I've done a reasonable amount to make it clearly fit on a single page. I've reduced the font size, but you know, the beautiful thing about computers is that people can zoom in or zoom out, whatever that might be. So you want to have, you don't want it to be, there's, a threshold for how small a font size you can go. 
but you can probably go a little bit smaller than you would, you would expect uh, because most people are still reading uh, resumes on a computer screen, not via printout in, in a pile anymore. So that's something to think about is that times have changed. You might be able to get away with something a little bit smaller. Uh, the first thing is we've talked, I definitely remove this uh, summary. Um, if you were going to include a summary, which I don't think either of us recommend, you don't want it to be longer than a sentence or like a, a couple of keywords. You know, we've seen some people that would have like at the top, like data scientist, um, you know, block uh, software engineer or something like that. I would say that that's the, the smaller you go, the more acceptable it is. So the most acceptable is not having one. But if you really needed to, a couple of keywords would be okay. Uh, this is really good experience. So data analysts, that's exactly what we want to see. Public policy, quantitative intern, this is really a really strong work experience. Um, some of the descriptions are a little bit vague. So develop custom data models and algorithms. Uh, we care a lot more about what the algorithms were and what value was created. The generalization there to me is not very relevant. You could save a lot of space uh, under this job bullet there. Um, the education, it looks pretty good. I, I think most business schools usually have a large component of community or uh, clubs are important or a lot of different things are important. So if you did have any activity there, if you're part of any groups, if you did some cool group projects, which are very uh, common in business school, I think it, it makes sense to include those. For example, when I was doing my master's in global uh, commerce, we did a project where we worked with the CEO of uh, Bigelow T. We also worked with someone who was really high up in Marriott. And those are real world projects um, where we were providing consulting services. Uh, and you know, you're know, you hugely overlooking that. If, I mean, it's a huge oversight if you don't include stuff like that. Uh, my last thing is I, I really recommend these skills being up top. Um, we probably want to dive more into Python and the notebooks and the, the techniques you're using there as well. Any additional thoughts there, Tina? Yeah, yeah. Um, pretty much again, I say this a lot. You said pretty much what I wanted to say. Just condense things. You have a lot of room to condense. Also, really impressed as well with your um, I, with your work experience. So I think that's really, really great. Um, yeah, about the vagueness thing, I think what would help is just following the structure that Ken and I have talked about, like always have a description of what's happening and then technical skills and then impact. You can put the impact as a separate bullet point where you can put it as part of your description, but just somewhere there. And that really, uh, it helps the reader understand what's happening and also helps you a lot because you're the one, when you write it, like that's how the format you're gonna follow. Um, so this is something that I don't think I've actually mentioned previously, which I really should have. Um, I noticed that your tenses are, are like a little bit all over the place. That's something that um, I'm personally pick, that, pick up on that quite, quite often. It's um, in general, it's better to use all past tense for everything. Um, and, and that really helps create a structure and makes everything look much more professional um, and easier to read. So except for that, um, I think you pretty much covered everything that I wanted to talk about um, in terms of the structure and all those things. I, oh, also your activities. I just wanted to say activities are really interesting, special Olympics marketer coordinator, community involvement, tournament coordinator. So this, I feel like this might have been like what Ken was saying about missing from the business school part, right? It sounds like this is probably something that could be part of your education. Um, and you can list that on top as well um, or like you know maybe just like split it so just have something as part of education and then the other you can say like extracurriculars and have like one line or something like that for stuff that's less important that will also help with your real estate in terms of um, condensing it into one page as well yeah um that's pretty I will much all yeah i will say this is driving me mad that the last bullet here is gray and the last bullet here is gray mm -hmm. Oh, maybe no. The, no, the, those are definitely different colors, right? I'm not losing my mind. I, I think they're all different sizes too. Have you noticed? Yeah, that? yeah. That 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 is killing me. I mean, that's driving me. I don't think anyone would notice, but um, 
<laughs> that, that's driving me nuts. Uh, what, one last thing I, I wanted to, to mention. So about the tenses, I agree with you. The way I've always done it is all of my past work, aside from my current position, is, is past tense. And then my current position, if I'm currently working on something, I say that I, uh, I, I do it in present tense. I, I think you can still do all past tense with your current position. But if we're thinking about it logically, uh, I don't think anyone would ding you if you had that structure. Um, mm -hmm. we, we've also talked about, so I think there's two approaches for uh, talking about your past work. So what you'd mention is overview tools and then also outcomes. Um, in your most current work, I think it's okay to take a project-based approach. So what, what I generally think about is if we're trying to talk about uh, we, we can either talk about the, the experience as a whole, or we can talk about the things that we did, and both are fine. So if you have, let's say, four different projects that you worked on, you can talk about those projects just individually, each as their own bullets. And through that, someone will understand what the nature of the role was. Like if I did these three projects, and these were the outcomes of the projects, then I know what they did on their job. Um, if you, you, know, you, you have more room for your, your most recent position, so it probably makes the most sense to have that approach there. Um, but it, again, you can, in my opinion, take either approach um, that when you're talking about the projects you do at work, they should have those three elements though. It's that I did this, this was the outcome, and these were the tools used um, in that case. So and just an additional thing to think about relating to that. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I think that is all of the resumes we have for this episode. Thank you everyone for tuning in and we will have another one of these coming up shortly. See you guys next time.